What's up everybody? You got the car, man. We're going to be dealing with a key issue today. No, not a key issue as in something important. Literally a key issue. LOL. Anyway, um, so I'm going to give you a pause for a second. I want you to subscribe if you get a chance. The reason is, is I'm starting to do the YouTube live and it gives us a chance to talk in real time. So if I'm if I'm on a live, which I'm going to start being doing, trying to do pretty regular, uh, that'll give us an opportunity to communicate without all the back and forth because I get so much um, messages and stuff that it's, it, sometimes it's really hard to respond. But I will figure out a way to try to respond to almost every one of them. Sometimes they get lost, but um, to alleviate some of that traffic, I do encourage you to keep asking questions because I will get to them. But if we can do it on live, that'd be awesome. Meanwhile, so what's the problem today? So... If you ever had a key, and this is a General Motors O2 Grand Prix, but I've had this happen from the sound, you name it, if it's General Motors, for some reason, they just do it. I can't get the key out, so it'll turn almost all the way off, and then it sticks, and then you can wiggle and jiggle it, and, you know, say three Hail Marys over it, and maybe you can get it loose, and, but, if you're in that situation, how do you actually want to get this loose, if you can, is you can take a screwdriver but run it right beside this key right here and tap it and what we're trying to do is get enough vibration make sure the key is completely depressed inside of the lock try to get enough vibration and wiggle it at the same time eventually you will get it out now if you're in a situation where you're getting ready to replace it go ahead and put it in the run position if you get it to move and um, the reason I'm saying that is because then that way we can remove the lock cylinder really easy. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And you can replace it real quick for about 30 bucks. Now what's going on with this is pretty simple. It's simple if you're not a one-handed guy trying to uh, do a videotape here. Alright, hold on. I'm going to pull the key out a little bit. Alright, see, we're going to focus on this right here. Okay, so what happens is when you slide the key in and it locks in place, which I'm doing right now, did you see it move down? And I'm going to try not to make you too dang drunk, and I'm going to try to, there you go, you see it coming back up? That's when you pull the key out, and that's what actually locks it into place. But what happens is, is you stick the key in, and instead of it going down like this brand new one is, it, uh these these edges right here the springs get weak and one end ends up sticking up or the other one ends up sticking up so that's what the vibration is you're trying to get it to settle back down to where it can actually turn because right now it's stuck kind of up like the key see how that just lifted up imagine if the key wasn't in all the way that's why you're having the hard time moving this it's just stuck in place so that's what's going on um i did see one guy use an air hammer um or chisel and he, he just backed the air down and just caused such a vibration he was able to move it. So I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, a lot of people just use a screwdriver, like I said, and tap it, 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 trying to make it go down. Meanwhile, um, let me tell you what it took to get this off. So let me go and show you what it actually, if you're going to do this job, let me give you some tips on it, okay? Okay, so your covers... You got a top and a bottom, no problem. Um, in the very bottom, you're going to see, you're going to access these first. And these are Torx bits. Um, you should have three of them. Depends on which GM it is. Some only have two. Some have four. It just, But usually, they're usually the same size. I don't know which one you're actually looking at. And let's see, that was a external Torx. No, I'm sorry. There we go. Let's see what size this actually is. So those are T27, Torque 27s right here. That's what actually fits it. And um, the bottom pretty much comes off. You'll have your tilt steering, which you can just slide out. You see that just slides in and out. And it goes right here, if you can actually see that. And it just basically goes in and clicks into place. The top one would be a little trickier. Um, so you're going to be using external Torx number six, and this is what the this is what it looks like. You might be able to get away with a 6.4 millimeter. Um, just be careful with it; you don't want to strip it. 
and this is to take the top cover off and it's just kind of one of those weird places if you look at my finger right here you'll see that little, little aluminum piece coming out and on the very bottom of it you'll see the external Torx head sticking out and if you look here at the top see how that just that that'll actually screw into your uh, top cover now there is a second bolt Try not to make you guys too dang I'm drunk. And if you look at your ignition switch, right here, right, right, right here, if you look right under there, you'll have to use a, um, you'll have to use an extension to get to it, same size, external six, um, and it'll, it'll just rise right up there to it, slides right off. If you want to, you can actually take off the, uh, um, rabbit ears, you can just kind of put a little flat in there and it'll slide off. No big deal. So, let's talk about how to actually remove the ignition key. Now let's pretend that we were able, you, you'll have to remove the covers, but now we're actually looking at it. Alright, let me get one up here in my hand. So I'm getting ready to show you a hole, and in that hole, I would recommend using a small Allen wrench. Because they're nice and sturdy, but if you see that little button... When we're pushing through the hole, we're trying to push that button down. And how you know you're on that button is you can just turn this knob one way or the other, and you'll feel it hit the Allen wrench, and you'll know when it's down. And all we're trying to do is push that down, and this sucker will slide right out. That's all there is to it. I mean, literally, there is nothing else inside of there. I don't know if you can even see inside of there, but probably can't see much. But there's nothing else in there. Um... And I'm going to show you the hole right here. There you go. And basically you would just push this in, depress it, and slide it out. Now as far as going back in, this has got to be in the run position. This is how you actually, that's how you actually get there. Um, and you know what? Let me show you on this old key real quick. I want to show you, this is, you've seen how the other one works. So let me show you this one right here real quick. Okay, hold on. Kind of getting it set up for you guys. Trying not to make you too drunk. You see it go down. See how it's up on the back? And that's all it takes to get you stuck right there. You see that one kind of come up a little bit? To get even with it. And then when you put it down, it just pulls down the one side. And then when you pull it out, the one side just comes back up. So this end right here is sticking up. And that's what happens to them, guys. I just wanted to throw that out there to you so you get a real good understanding um, of how that works. Now, let me get the other key. Since we're in the run position, we should be able, of course, to take the uh, Allen wrench back out. I'm trying to do this where I can actually physically see it. And if you look here, you got a little alignment. Um, don't know if you can quite tell it. But this is only going to go in one way. Just throwing that out there. You see the the. You'll see the lever that moves, and then at the top of the switch, you'll see a place that, that actually goes into, and then you'll see an alignment here on the side, and it'll be right there on the side as well. So you just kind of line those little bad boys up, and then we're going to push it through. Hopefully, we're there. There we go. So we're turning on and off. I'm pretty happy. I think we got us a winner. Winner chicken dinner. Now, um, I do tell you the guys to do this. You, you can go ahead and do that and then put your covers back on. No, no big deal. Um, you don't see any power on up here at all. And that's okay. My battery is actually dead. Dead. So um, I, w I would definitely disconnect it before you try this. When you get ready to start this, I can't show you because I don't have this on. I don't have any power. But you turn this in the on position and your security light will start blinking. Keep it there for about 10 minutes. Kick it back for about 30 seconds and turn it back on. If a security light don't come on again, then you're good to go. If it comes on again, let it sit there for 10 more minutes. 
and rinse and repeat if you need to but try to start it after each time if the security light stops blinking you're good to go and that's how you did that's all you have to do to actually program this all right kids thank you out there in youtube land looking forward to seeing you on the next crazy video whatever the hell i'm doing i don't know what it is but please subscribe support your military we will see you around on the next go round see ya